Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Justin McElroy. I play Justin on My Brother, My Brother, and Me. Uh, I'm Travis McRoy. I play the part of Travis on My Brother, My Brother, and Me. Uh, our youngest brother has uh, been blessed with a uh, another child and as such is unavailable to record our comedy podcast, My Brother, yeah. My Brother, and Me. But Poor planning on his part, poor planning, I would say. Yeah. Very rude, short-sighted. Yeah. Good yeah. news, though. We have something kind of special for you. Um Back in, oh, what year was it, Trav? I think it was 2018. 2018. Yeah. We, Travis and I uh, filmed our, oh, gosh, what would you call it? It's sort of an experimental uh, show about woodworking yeah. for, uh, well, I mean, the intent was for HGTV. Didn't get a pickup. Yeah, that's true. Uh, well, yeah, uh, our producer came to us, producer Stan, came to us and said, uh, I love what you guys do with the podcast. Um, do you think you could bring that kind of energy to a TV show? And we said, well, we have Stan. Oh, uh, but it, yeah. it, it failed. It didn't pan out. Yeah. And Stan said, well, maybe the problem is three is just too many. Yeah. So he kind of convinced me and Travis to, to, to dial in. Yeah. Get rid of some of the chaff. If you will. Fo yeah, yeah. Focus on the wheat and really make a show about the fine art of woodworking. Right, right, right. Something that Justin and I are both very passionate about. Yes, and something that Griffin maybe is less so. He yeah. kind of likes electronics and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, well, so, Griffin lacks passion in basically anything. In, in I've, I've never seen him happy. Yeah, uh, not once. Yeah. Um, maybe, I mean, uh, hopefully this new baby will finally be. Maybe, maybe that piece. will be the missing, yeah. We'll so anyway, fill it out. Uh, what we thought, what no one wanted it. No. Even though we tried our best, which doesn't seem fair. Yeah, I right? that's the way it's supposed to work. And we really wanted it too. Let, let me be clear. We tried our best and we wanted it. That's and true. And still they wouldn't give it to us. Yeah, which doesn't seem fair. But yeah. we did, didn't want it to go to waste. So what we've got for you is a really special treat. Um, it is the audio, just the audio. Yeah. Of course, we can't show you the the vi the, the video uh, sort of half of this. Yeah, both for copyright reasons, and we don't know how to do that through podcasting. Through podcasting, it doesn't make sense. Um, so uh, we just want to share that with you, and um, we hope you enjoy it. You know, try not to be too sad about things, what might have been. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know. Just enjoy what is, you know what I mean? Just enjoy what is, what was. It's just, this one wasn't in the cards, but at least you get to enjoy uh, the new Appalachian workshop featuring the McElroy brothers, but not Griffin. Uh, and without further ado, let's let's take it away. Another day, another brother shopping some wood with one another. Well, there's still some wood to cut, so it's time to give it all to Justin and Travis to cut up. To cut up, yeah, to cut up and put back together again in the new Appalachian workshop featuring the McElroy brothers. And so I say, joiner? No, that's a planer. It's a, like a completely different tool. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I love it. Hi, everybody. Oh, hi. Uh, my name is Justin McElroy, and welcome to the New Appalachian Workshop. Uh, this is my brother, Travis McElroy. Hi, folks. So glad you could join us. Hey, uh, most of you probably know us from the wild world of podcasting, where we've had limited success in a variety of fields. Uh, maybe you know us from our uh, best-selling graphic novels or our role-playing games. But our real passion is the art of wood. Oh, Yes. It's something uh, it's spoken to me for quite some time. Uh, now my brother, a uh, recent convert, but a uh, strict devotee, I would say. Uh, and we're coming at this from a couple different standpoints, folks. You know, Justin is more of like the, the furniture guy, more of like the practical. Yeah, uh, the sexy one? The, sure, the sexy one. I'm a bit more of the bad boy of woodworking, coming at this from uh, a carving perspective, as well as uh, doing some uh, scenic work in the theater. Uh, now, Travis, back when you were treading the boards, you were also a licensed contractor. Is that, that is correct? true. Yeah, I was a master carpenter, a technical director, and became a licensed contractor and had to learn how building codes worked, sort of. Uh, before we get into the show proper, I did want to show you something I've been working on. Oh, yeah? Yeah! What do you think? Oh, my God, Justin. Yeah. That's incredible. 
We, yeah, thank you, Trav. I have, I've been working on it for about six weeks now. Uh, I'm real proud of it. It is sort of the first step of a wooden toilet. Yeah, no, I'm I'm loving. Can I just say the seat so smooth? I was worried about that. That was a That's, concern. It's crucial. It's also shaped exactly to uh, my specific butt type. When I sit on this, I can't actually feel it. Oh, because really? Of, because of that. You, you've reached butt negative is what yeah. we call that. Yeah, butt neutral. Hugely disconcerting. Now, can you guess the wood? Take a look at the grain. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't stained it, so you're getting just the natural thing. Can yeah. you guess the wood I've used for this project? Mm, let me smell it. Hmm. Is that cherry? You, you got it. It's ah, cherry. It's a cherry toilet it's seat. It's a great choice. It's a great, can I just say, a great choice. Now, are you going to do the whole thing in cherry? The bowl, the, the reservoir, the pipes, the flanges, everything? Yeah, I have to figure out a point at which the woodcraft stops. Yeah. Because you could seal things up all day long, but you are going to get some expansion and contraction once, wood, once uh, water enters the picture. Now, have you thought about using sawdust in place of water? Now that's interesting. Kind of a dry toilet. A dry toilet, if you will. Mm. That maybe using. Uh, um, uh, I've uh, that reminds me of an old woodworking joke. Oh, have you have you heard this one? Probably. You've. Heard, you, I know you're kind of the master of woodworking jokes. Yeah. So I. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. that you. You uh, heard that one I said about planer earlier, right? Remind. No, remind. Oh, me. um, where someone said, "Is that a planer?" And I said, or they said, is that a joiner? And I said, joiner? No, that's oh, a planer. Oh, yes, it's yes. Right, okay. Uh, my joke I wanted to tell you was, did you hear about the guy who mixed up sandpaper and toilet paper? No. His woodworking looked like... Oh, kind of, I uh, love it. A little blue. It. A little blue for my taste. A little blue. Uh, we are, uh, uh, w we made our living and sort of got our notoriety in the past with an advice show. And so mm -hmm. our producer, Stan Tabowski, thought that it would be great if we, um, do people normally mention producers on the? Well, it's a fun thing. They did it on like, I think Regis and Kathy Lee. The, uh, it was a whole yes, character. Yes, Jarvis. <laughs> yeah. I remember Jarvis on there. Yeah. So this is a, uh, a an advice segment, but it's focused on wood. Yeah. Wood. You, you know, your and our listeners from our old podcast that we used to do, my brother, my brother and me, send in their woodworking questions, and we want to answer it here on the new Appalachian Workshop featuring the McElroy Brothers, but not Griffin. And let's be clear, folks. You know, in in some of our previous incarnations, uh, we've been somewhat jokesters. Right, but there's nothing joking about wood does not interest us at all. Like uh, carving, uh, be it carpentry, be it uh, you know working with heavy machinery, can be very dangerous, folks. So this is going to be straight down the middle. Yeah, uh, pretty serious stuff. So let's get to that first question. Obvious disclaimer to uh, safety does come first. You shouldn't trust anything we say. No, absolutely uh, not. Dear brothers, I have recently started a laser engraving wood business. Nice. I'm, I mostly just engrave on cheap plywood, oh. and to make anything 3D, I use several different types of glue, all of which have awful repercussions. The wood glue that's the safest takes the longest to dry. Ugh. It's messy. Yeah. Been told that wiping it on my pants makes it look like... Um, is this blue? Is it about to get blue? For TVs... <sighs> Made, made jizzies. We'll Just made jizzies. Jizzies. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like jizzies. I made jizzies. Okay. And the quick drying glue, I swear, is just repackaged twice as expensive super glue mm -hmm. and uh, also can be difficult to use. In your expertise, what's the best solution to gluing wood? How can I stop it from being a mess of my jeans? That's sincerely suspicious stains in San Antonio. Get yourself Travel, what do you, what do you What's your glue? Uh, well, my gu I like uh, Gorilla Wood Glue, frankly. Gorilla made here in Cincinnati, Queen City. I enjoy it. But uh, let me just say right off the bat, friend, get yourself an apron. Don't wipe oh, your jizzies yeah, on your jeans. Oh, yeah, working apron. That's great. Get yourself an apron. Get yourself an apron. Or get jeans that are the same color as the jizzies. And then you I can't use, see them. I use gym shorts and old T-shirts that uh, make me look like a... I'm about to go to a soul cycle class. Oh. But what I'm really doing is 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 doing wood. And that's a, that's a trick of the wood. Not a lot of people will tell you that, but like the wood will see you and it will relax because it's like, oh, he's not going to be drilling into us today. He's going to soul cycle class. Oh wait, what's that? He's drilling screws into us, but they're so relaxed it doesn't split. 
right? That's something that they don't tell you at woodworking school. You just got to find that out out here on the streets. Um, but yeah, I think it sounds like if you're wiping enough on your pants to look like jizzies, you might just be using too much glue that's getting all over your cans. I, that might be the issue there. I have a big pile of rags that I'm using to wipe away excess. Yeah. Um, but you know what? If you do have excess, sometimes the smartest thing to do is just let it dry a little bit, let it tack up, and then scrape it off there with a, uh, uh, a scraper. I I'm love that. Scraping. I Bye. love that. Now, I'm a tight bond too, man. Oh, okay. I like tight bond too. Uh, more than... I actually use type on two more than three. Now the differences can be to the amateur can be a little bit uh, tough to discern. Type yeah. on three is waterproof, while type on two is water resistant. So oh, it's outside yeah, you yeah, yeah, type yeah, on yeah, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also type on three, and this is some this is a personal thing for just the way I like to work. Type on three has a longer open time, about ten minutes, and so it, you can set up. Uh, type bond two in about five minutes mm -hmm. and i like to work fast yeah i'm not doing a bunch of complicated glue ups i like it to start tacking up so i can move on with my life now and now and now, now justin yeah i'm sorry just to jump in here but sometimes that drying time that setup time give you a chance to uh, step back and you know sip some mint tea look at your handiwork think about how you know how much you've done how far you've come uh how you know in the act of creation it is like unto a god do you ever just step back and think about how only God can make a chair and you, just the two of you? Just me and God making chairs. No, Travis, I've never taken time for reflection like oh, that. Oh, you have to. Oh, you have to. That's my favorite part. Sometimes uh, I'll get a hunk of wood. Uh, I'll, I'll see what exists within it that I can bring out. And then that's what I'll carve out. And say I carve out a little piggy, right? Mm -hmm. And I think... Uh, I've created life. You know what I mean? That this is kind of my act of creation. And in, and in that way, a bit of an act of defiance against God. You know what I mean? And then I'll sip my mint tea, uh, which I have here in the mug I carved. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> mm, and just think about my sheer power. Oh, hi, guys. You're talking about... Oh, God. It's Woods of the Witch. No. Oh, my goodness. God. Woods of... I'm sorry, Trav. I talked to the producers about it. I told them I didn't want to do... What are you guys talking about? I told them I didn't want to do Woodzo the Woodchuck, who wants to it's, eat all it's of our for, projects. It's for the kids, and it's toyetic. Hey, Woodzo. Well, hey, Trav. What kind of thing are you guys working on today? Anything involving wood? Well, it's our, always involving wood, Woodzo. It's a, it's a woodworking show. Um, and uh, as you can see here, uh, Justin has created a, a beautiful cherry turlet seat designed to fit his butt. No, Woods out. Woods out. Leave it. Hey, come on. I'm starving. Okay, but don't make me activate the electronic belt, Woods out. The scientists made me have a soul and a brain. I know, Woods out. Uh, I'm hey, starving. Woods out. Woods out. Back in the crate. All right. I'll take a break. What's the crate made of? It's made out of metal. We planned ahead, Wood, so you can't be released into the wild. The genetic modifications, if that got spread throughout the Woodchuck community, it would be the end of us. Uh, Trav, with Woodzo uh, back in his metal crate, would you like another question? Well, actually, Justin, huh? I want to, uh, I want to take you over here. Join me oh. over here. Okay. That's right. It's Woodworking Legends. It's oh. the Woodworking Legends corner. Now, Justin, uh, I want to show you. Uh, can Stan, can we pull up that image? Yes. Okay, so folks at home, you are seeing uh, now an image of the miracle steps of the Loretto Church. Look miracle at those. Miracle steps. Wow, look yeah. at those things. Look at them, folks. Oh, goodness. I'm so glad you're all seeing this because you wouldn't believe it if I described it to you. Oh, Hachi. Now that's... Trav, if I could say that's craftsmanship. That's craftsmanship right there, Justin. It is a 720 spiral staircase <laughs> with no center column and no supports. How on earth... Did they get that done? Well, it's not only that, Justin. Supposedly, a uh, legend says, no nails were used, just wooden pegs and glue. Hachi glue? Yep. When was it made? Well, the, not the 1800s. But here's the real thing, Justin. That's not 
the real miracle. I'm already on cloud nine over here. I and know. I use this staircase to get up there. Now, here's the part of the story that's, uh, I, I, this is blue, so I figure Stan will, but it's kind of f***ed up. <laughs> Uh, the person who designed this church, this chapel, didn't design stairs into it originally. Uh-huh. So you had the second floor choir, you know, area, and it was unreachable when the church was done, according to legend. Wow, that must have been embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, it must have been a real problem. Uh, oh, there's your problem kind of thing, you know, as they say. And so uh, the nuns there, well, they prayed prayed uh, to the patron saint of woodworking, um, and uh, then uh, a lot of, listen, a lot of uh, carpenters, let's just call them what they were, carpenters, came in and said, nothing can be done about it. That's just unusable space now. Maybe yeah. a ladder, they it's said. A big dust big dust collector. Yeah, there. and the nun said, a ladder? No, we're nuns. That would be embarrassing. It's, can you imagine what that would look like? Nuns going up and down a ladder all day? So they prayed. And then an unnamed carpenter arrived, built these steps, left without payment or giving his name, and he was never seen again. Now, that sounds noble, but I've been woodworking for long enough to know that what probably happened is he finished, and he's like, I have no f***ing clue if these are going to stay yeah. or not. He, uh, I'm terrified. I'm actually going to just go ahead and book. And to be fair, the railing was added later by the nuns. So originally there was <laughs> no railing on this bad boy. Uh, and I guarantee that Kyrie Lutton's like, man, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's, I, this is just a weird dream I had and there's no guarantee. I should go. I should, I should go, go. while this it's still the- dark and no one's here. <laughs> what a beauty. Now, where are these? This is in Santa Fe. Uh, at the Loretto Church, the Miracle Staircase. Well, I got to get over there. Uh, uh, I, I got to get over there and check it out. Um, that'll be the first trip I take here in just a couple, whenever I'm traveling yep. again. If that's a Worth point. it. Can you imagine Wor- walking up and down those babies? Will they let you? <laughs> do they make you pay I think, to do it? I or? think it actually is $3 a person, if I remember correctly. Okay, that's a, that's a steal, though. Yeah. Uh, here's another question from our, our, uh, our viewers. I'm a would-be keen amateur woodworker, but I don't know where to get any wood to work. Ah. I don't want a heap of lumber big enough to build a house with. Oh. Just a handful. Do I just have to steal it? Why is Help that, me, please. Why is that Longing where you'd lum- go to? Wait, hold on. Help me, please. Longing for lumber in Ladywood. I like that the two options are, to this yeah. person, order... Like a huge stack of house amount lumber or steal it. Yeah. I mean, when you start in any craft, every question seems unanswerable. Yeah. Where do you get even get wood? Right. It, that, it It's comical now uh, to a seasoned pros. Yeah. <laughs> but it is a fair question. Where do you get wood? Well, friend, let me tell you, wood's all around you. It's everywhere. It's every, Look over there. See that? That's your neighbor's fence. That's wood. You can use that. Well, no, you shouldn't take people's fences. No, I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying you could. I'll tell you one great source if you want to start fucking around. You know, keep an eye out for pallets. Oh, yeah, Pallet yeah, wood yeah. is very on brand right now. Now, you got to be careful to make sure that it's not, hasn't been um, chemically uh, treated you, uh, to where it would be uh, dangerous. You can look. There's like charts you can look up that tell you what the different stampings on the pallet wood are. And usually they're going to be put together uh, a lot of times with nails. So you want to make sure you have like a Wonder Bar or Crowbar or something that's going to help you pry those apart. But once you do and you clean them and you fix them all up, you give them a little sand or uh, that could be some quality wood. That's going to have a lot of character. Um, and it's going to be something that you can uh, just mess around with gratis. Let me tell you my trick, Justin. Okay. Look for restores. Look for there. We got one here in Cincinnati, uh, and it's where people bring, uh, you know, if they've if they've done some demo to old buildings, they'll bring like old doors there and old, uh, you know, pieces of uh, like woodwork and uh, some trim and stuff like that. And sometimes you can find some good quality, already well seasoned aged wood there. And the deeper trick is sometimes it's already made into something. Okay. And then you can just buy that and say you made it. 
Um, now, you that, won't get the satisfaction out of it. Let me be clear. I wouldn't do that. I actually yeah. don't agree with that. But, but you will get compliments. Yeah, I guess. That's true. Um, I would be careful if you're driving around and you're looking for... I mean, you can look around for furniture that people are throwing out to try to find some wood to mess up there. But be careful because like a lot of the stuff that's been made in the past however many years, 10, 20 years, a lot of it's going to be made out of like particle board. Uh, an MDF, which is uh, medium density fiberboard, and it, and that's I don't really think that that's worth reclaiming. You're not going to be able to strip that, and make it look look nice. It's just going to be uh, junk. So I wouldn't I wouldn't mess around with that. And I'll use MDF in, in a project, but not I mean something for the shop. I'll tell you another happy. secret, folks. This is from Travis, the theater professional. Um, if you got an IKEA near you, uh, oftentimes they will have a section. That is just like, hey, here's a bunch of loose parts that are either from returns or like incomplete boxes or damaged floor models. And you can find some pretty good like butcher block tabletops in there sometimes. And then you just build a table under that. You use that butcher block for the top. Now you got yourself a little cutting station to use in the kitchen or for kids to do crafts on top of. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What a great, what a great tip. Thank, Thank you. Trav. You're welcome. I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, that'll be five dollars, please. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got uh, I got some more woodworking jokes. Oh, please. From, yeah. Uh you know, woodworking is really serious, but we like to have a little bit of fun from time to time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I wanted to sort of take a second to tickle your funny. Hey, part. Justin, you know, uh, how are these jokes like drilling into a board without pre-drilling? Uh, how, how? They crack me up. That's actually extremely good, Travis. Thank you. I wish you'd had the courage to wait to say that after I did the jokes. Oh, right, right, right. Because I feel like it would have hit a lot better. Well, but like, we'll edit still. out in post. We'll get it in post. Hey. <laughs> Hey, uh -huh. hey, Trav. Yeah, Justin? <laughs> hey, Trav. Yeah? What's a woodworker's favorite band? Ooh, uh, I, I, I give up. Stained. Ah, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's a pretty good. Oh, Stan's over there losing it. He said stained, not stand. <laughs> hey, um, here's another one. What is Geppetto's favorite cereal? Oh, boy. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Uh, I give up. I know you think it's Pinocchio's. Oh, that's what I was going to say, but yeah. Listen, you got to really, this one's a thinker. Okay. And less, and not as much a joke. Okay. <laughs> I know you think it's Pinocchio's, but it's actually Cheerios. They're Whittle O's. Though I guess both would work. Okay. Okay. Now, Justin, is that from, uh, is that from a viewer? Is that viewer submitted or is that something you found? <sighs> would work. Okay, no, I get, I feel like there's eight punchlines in there. Yeah. Because you also said Whittle, <laughs> Whittle. Uh, They're Whittle O's, Cheerios are Whittle O's. Yeah, no, I, okay, I get that. Yeah, 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 so Pinocchio's is one punchline. Whittle O's is another one. Woodwork is the third punchline. You don't often see that in a joke where they just say like, hey, choose your own favorite punchline here. Um, laugh at all of them. Um, oh boy, Stan pissed himself. <laughs> That's actually hugely embarrassing. Stan pissed um, himself laughing. Is he on camera right now? He is? He is. Can you get him off? Can we get Stan off camera, please? Okay, thank um, you. As a woodworker, I love the final stages of a project. Oh, yeah. All the little impurities and errors go away. Oh, yeah. It's a real varnishing act. Ah, I love it. I forgot we were doing a joke, and I thought we were just talking about how good it is to finish a project, and so you really got me there at the end. Yeah, that's it's pretty good. I tried to come up with a, a better joke than that. Yeah. Trav? Yeah. Uh, I, I think I nailed it. Uh, nobody saw it. Oh, I see. Nailed it and saw. Once again, yeah. another two for there. I love it. I love it. I love it. Way to go against the grain. <laughs> <laughs> Did you read that off of something? No, 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 it just came to me. It just came to me, you know? Oh, man, that was good. Can you say it again exactly the same way? Yeah. <laughs> way to go against the grain. Is that clean? Oh, sorry, oh. fellas, I don't get it. Jesus. Oh, oh God, you scared the sh** out of me. Hey, look, hey, I'm over here. Oh, yeah. I didn't get your joke. Can you explain it in detail? It's going against the grain because wood has grain in it. And you, you don't want to go against the grain because then it's usually... Is, that, is, it, is the grain the wood's blood? 
No. It, I mean, the grain muscles? is... Muscles? Huh. No. Is the grain the woods muscles? I don't think so. Getting hungry over here. Hold on. Okay. Oh, are you drooling blood? I, you know where I like it is the heartwood. That's right near the center. That's the sweet stuff. Oh, God. Like mother's milk. Oh, Jesus. Can we cover up that cage, please? Can we get a heavy-duty tarp over that, please? I'm scared of the dark, but it's always dark. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. Hey, we're having a lot of fun here, and we've got so much more fun to come. But first, let's take a quick break and uh, hear from our commercial sponsor. <laughs> you know, friends, uh, a, a woodworking TV show was once just a dream for my brother and I, but now we're making it a reality. And you don't have to wait for a sleazy TV producer to pull up uh, onto your lawn and force you to get into the back of his Jetta to go make your dreams a reality. You can just use Squarespace. Yeah. And maybe, you, can, you know, maybe when the producer pulls up, your little brother is like at the store or whatever. And so you two get in the car and then you haven't seen Griffin for a while. And, you know, that happens. You know, sometimes you're away from your brother and you need a way to communicate and to send messages through. So you can use Squarespace. You know, you can showcase your work or post pictures of what you've been up to, mm -hmm. uh, sell products and services of all kinds, including your, your woodworking stuff or, uh, you know, any kind of information you have about your whereabouts and you can promote your physical or online business and more. Yeah, you can, uh, uh, it's free and secure hosting. They got analytics that grow in real time and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. So go to squarespace.com slash my brother for a free trial. And if you see Griffin, please tell him that we're safe and we're doing our best and we're trying to get free and use the offer code my brother to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or or domain. So go to squarespace.com slash my brother for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, use the offer code my brother, as in my brother Griffin McElroy, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. You know, I can't remember the last time I went to the post office or anywhere, really, because <laughs> uh, I just don't have the time or the ability to. And that's why I love stamps.com so much, because they allow me to mail and ship anytime, anywhere right from my computer in this basement. And, you know, whether it's a giant office sending out invoices or, you know, you're sending postcards to loved ones or, you know, ransom notes or whatever, an online seller shipping out orders, anything like that, you know, you, you can use stamps.com and they can handle it all with ease. With Stamps.com, you get discounts of up to 40% off post office rates and up to 62% off UPS shipping rates. Wow, that's amazing, Travis. How can I take advantage of this? Well, stop wasting time going to the post office and go to Stamps.com instead. There's no risk, which sounds really nice. And with my promo code, my promo code, my brother, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage and a digital scale. There's no long-term commitments or contracts. And there's so many contracts that I wish I hadn't signed, uh, especially recently, uh, that committed me to things. So isn't it nice to have no long-term commitments or contracts? You just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in my brother. That's stamps.com, promo code my brother. stamps.com. Never go to the post office or anywhere else again. Hey, so welcome back uh, to the new Appalachian Workshop uh, with the McRoy brothers, but not Griffin. And uh, you know what that means. Uh, we're back from the commercial break, so it's time for everybody's favorite segment. Which wood would you work with if you could woodwork wood? Now, Justin, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to give you some projects, and you tell me what kind of wood would you use for those projects. Okay, you ready? Uh, oh, okay. Is there a right? Is this kind of a right or wrong kind of answer? Well, there are some preferred woods, but Justin, it's all about how you work it. <laughs> that wasn't a joke. It is about how you work it. I mean, that's where the skill comes in. So, uh, the first project is outdoor furniture and decking. 
Well, uh, I personally uh, uh, would use teak. Teak's, teak. Uh, teak is my is my go to if I'm going to be outdoors. You know the uh, the uh, uh, the ravages of nature uh, are are pretty savage, but teak has got the uh, the power to to stand up to it. And I I would I would probably go with uh, with teak. Trav. Oh, interesting. See, I would go with cedar. Uh, mm. It's relatively soft. It's a one on a scale of one to four. It has a straight grain and has a slightly aromatic smell. And it's great for outdoor projects uh, because it can handle moist environments without rotting. Wow. You know what? Different strokes for different folks. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Now, Justin, if you were going to do, oh, let me see, um, building framing, right, what would you use? Uh, I mean, I would probably, you know, building framing, especially in this market. Yeah. Especially in this market, is going to run you a pretty penny. Oh yeah, oh but yeah. But I'm I I would I would probably still uh, frame with pine. That's mm. how uh, I would I would frame out a home. Yeah, see, I would do Douglas fir. I think. Okay. Yeah, it's inexpensive and it can be used for making furniture, but it doesn't have a very interesting grain pattern and it doesn't take uh, stain well. So mostly, uh, I would use it for uh, you know for framing, uh, especially since it's it's a four on a scale of one to four uh, for softwood. So moderately strong. Uh, now, Justin, one now, people, you know, people, can we talk about softwood and hardwood for a second? Yes, please. Of course. Of people, this this uh, distinction, once you learn it, it makes it all make a lot more sense. Uh, softwood comes from conifer trees. Uh huh. Yep. Coniferous. Yep. And uh, the deciduous trees give you softwood. Now, or, uh, sorry, the deciduous trees give you uh, give you hardwood. Now, uh, so con uh, coniferous like pine, that's gonna be softwood. And that's that's a tree shape like this. Right? Yep. And now if we're talking about a deciduous tree, that's more a tree shaped like this. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you can see on the diagram here some of the differences between the two. Yeah. And we also have this scale. Uh, it's going to be up for the, the rest of the episode. So you can reference it whenever you need to. The scale of the hardness of the woods and which one you want to yeah. use. Uh, that You will notice that scale has taken up the, the left four-fifths of your screen. Yeah. And we have been relegated to sort of the last fifth there. That's something we're working on yeah. in Video Toaster, and we haven't really figured that out yet, but I'm sure we'll, we'll get it. Oh, corrected. we've also got some fun overlays coming for episode two, so stick around for that as soon as we figure yeah, it out. Yeah, still in production. Yep. But uh, now, Justin, I got one last one here, and this is, uh, okay. this is a tricky one. Okay. Furniture joinery, flooring veneers, and musical instruments. Ooh. Yeah, yeah right? Um, I knew that one would get you. Um, I mean, I guess. Now, you're probably trying to think of a tricky one here because the answer is so obvious, right? Yeah, but I guess I probably use, I've never made any of that stuff. Hey, get it together. Um, it's mahogany. Just say mahogany. I feel like you want me to say mahogany. Say, just say mahogany. We have easy. to move forward. We're almost done. It's got to be something no, trickier than mahogany. No, just say, just say mahogany. So we can move forward, please. We have to. If I say that it's a trap, you can, everybody's getting almost fucking it's, it's not a trap, Justin. It's mahogany. If I say that and it's the wrong thing, you're going to No, it's a hug, buddy. Buddy. We're in this I've together. We're the only here. ones we I've can only trust. I've been doing this for a few months. I'm trying, Trout. Justin, we're the only ones we can trust in this scenario. Mahogany. Yes, it's mahogany. Also called Honduran mahogany. It has a reddish mm. brown to deep red tint, a straight grain, which is so important, medium texture, and a hardness of around two on a scale of one to five. It takes stain very well and looks great with just one coat or ten of oil. And now that is a that is a, a, a tricky one because mahogany um, is, is not the most... Uh, sustainable. No, forest. that is the big problem. It's not grown in sustainable right. forests. So that is uh, a good reason not to make any musical instruments moving forward. Right. <laughs> right. No more musical. Yeah. There are strains of mahogany that are, that are okay. But yeah, like, but better you know, not to risk it. I think just uh, That's true. Stop you're, not a, music. you're not a sustainability expert. Yeah. Just stop using uh, mahogany at all. Yeah. Especially musical instruments. Bamboo sustainable though. Woo! Yeah, well, yeah. I know, Woo! Yeah, but how do you, sustains itself? How would you even use bamboo to make a musical instrument? You know what I mean? Like, come on. What what would it be? A flute? I guess it could be a yeah, flute. Yeah, stupid. No, you stupid. could probably do a flute with it. Now that I'm thinking about it, it's not. Hey, buddy, you're doing so good. Just stick with it, okay? Here's another question, and I love this one. Yeah, dear brothers. Okay. 
How do I get over my fear of using power tools for woodworking? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They are very loud and fast and have sharp blades that can cut off my fingers. I'm a tech theater major, and I have to build flats all the time. Please help. Alternatively, any hot tips for using a power screwdriver? I always screw it up. (laughs) Not intended. That's from Scared of Circular Saws in uh, CT. Yeah. The thing you need to know is that all power tools do want to cut your fingers off. It is. Yeah. They're, I they're mean, kidding design. aside, you should be very afraid. Yeah. <laughs> That's good and healthy. That says you're, you're thinking. Like, yeah, you should be wicked afraid of them. They're so sharp yeah. and dangerous. When I have bought power tools in the past, it is amazing to me that I don't require some kind of permit or oh, yeah. test or waiting process. I am buying something that could easily kill um, yeah, when my first saw that I bought, my first power saw was a uh, was a circular saw. Oh yeah, made by the fine folks at Milwaukee. Um, I thought it was going to be the only saw I'd ever owned, so I wanted to get it right the first time. So I got a, a, a M18 battery powered circular saw from um, Milwaukee, and as I was leaving, I kept waiting for someone to stop. Me. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, sir, you actually don't. I can't sell that to you in in good conscience. Yes, I I own uh now Justin's a Milwaukee man. Of course, I'm a Dewalt man. Um, I I own a battery operated Dewalt Sawzall, which is like the shotgun of saws of electric saws. It is terrifying to behold. And when I worked in the theater, I was often standing on top of a ladder, holding it over my head during strikes, just cutting stuff above me. So. Yeah, that, Not, that, but this is why it's good, question asker, that you're getting into it while you're still, I assume, in college and young, because you don't understand death as much during that time period, and you will feel a lot more invincible than you will yeah. when you reach your mid to late 30s. Lots of, and there's lots of time for those fingers to grow back. At yeah, your age, yeah, yeah. you're going to be absolutely fine. But no, do be afraid. Yes. The, the, the time people get hurt is when they stop being yes, afraid yes, yes. and start getting silly and doing some bad cuts that aren't advisable. Just do like do it in a proper safe way. And there's like don't start using a tool until you've watched the videos on how to use it extremely safely. I'll give you an example. You, I bring home a uh, piece of plywood, oh, yeah. like a four by eight sheet, and these what things are thickness. Eight, what are you talking about here? Thickness, three quarter inch. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I bring home that that four by eight sheet, and uh, it's miserable to try to work with something. They're so heavy. Oh yeah, dude. Like that's just you don't think about it. They're so heavy, so you want to break it down as soon as possible. But and and you know you'll see some people just like turn on a a table saw and push it across the table saw and start roughly breaking it down like that and it, you could anything could happen oh yeah when you're doing that anything you talk about kickback from oh, half boy, a sheet boy, of boy. plywood Ooh. it's gonna cut you in half like a play-doh man yep. here's what you do and i actually got this tip from uh uh steve ramsey he does woodworking for mere mortals he puts it down he has like an inch thick sheet of insulation that he lay in that same form factor four by eight and he'll lay down the sheet of insulation and then put the plywood on top of it. So then, then break it down with a circular saw. So you're cutting into the um, cutting into the insulation, not enough to sever it. But then you're uh, you can make your cut safely that way. That's a, that's the way to break down plywood right there. Yeah. But you need to know this stuff. You don't just start like getting silly with it. No, and no, no, trying no. Trying different stuff. If you find yourself thinking, "Well, this isn't made for this," but stop, stop. Stop. Yeah, right. That, yes, exactly. I think I can figure out a way to stop no. it. Uh, um, and, you know, ask for help. That's the other thing, ask man. Ask for help. Yeah. Um, and make sure, you know, while we're on the topic of safety and I don't want to, make sure you're you're using, to, at, at the very least, make sure, you know, people always think about the saw cutting you and this is bad and they will. Uh, but uh, don't forget about the the other stuff that you're you should be using day in day out. You should be, vitamins. Uh, no, you should be wearing eye protection and ear protection. You should be uh, wearing like protecting your breathing airways, trying to get ventilation and dust collection. And, and take it from me, right. from personal, very scary experience. No baggy sweaters. No baggy sweaters. What a specific. Oh, yeah. What a specific Well, thing. sometimes, Justin, then uh, this is a hypothetical situation in which I'm going to be uh, talking about a scary body thing. So, warning. Uh, but sometimes you're wearing a baggy sweater. You push it up uh, the sleeves to your elbows. And you're using a chop saw. Uh, the, the sweater sleeve gets caught on the blade. 
pulls your arm uh, towards the blade. Luckily, the sweater stops the blade just as the blade touches your skin, and you only get a minor scar. Uh, sometimes, I mean, hypothetically, that could happen. Uh, another thing, theater tech question asker, don't brag about how good you are at using a tool while you're using it, because inevitably, that's when you will hurt yourself in front of other people. Like, say, hypothetically, you are showing a freshman, and you are a senior, how to use a pneumatic stapler. Uh, and you're like being all like, yeah, and you got to be careful, man. Those things have a lot of power and they could shoot right through your finger. And then it double fires and you shoot a stable through your finger and like that, you know, and that's, that's just a moment where God says, maybe you aren't unto a God in your creation because you are fallible, uh, as humans are wont to be. And only I can build a gazebo without double firing and shooting an inch and a half pneumatic stable through my finger. Uh, well, folks, I, uh, I have a really exciting, exciting surprise for you. Uh, here on our first uh, uh, episode, we uh, wanted to get a special guest, so we reached out to all the celebrity uh, woodworkers that we know. Uh, because, you know, the celebrities, they're just like us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And they're, and they're, they're out there work, working wood as well. Um, and uh, I am so thrilled to welcome to the program uh, Bill Macy. Hi, everybody. Me? Hey, Bill. Uh, Please welcome call to me new Bill. Appalach welcome to the New Appalachian Workshop featuring the McElroy Brothers, but not Griffin. Uh, it's so, uh, I'm so thrilled to have you here. No, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to be here. You know, I love talking about woodworking. I love it. I love it. If, and I love, we love watching you on Fargo and Shameless. Thank you. And Mystery Men. Uh, so what are you working on these days? Well, I'll tell you, it's no mystery. Uh, man, we own uh, my wife's childhood home in Colorado, and we're uh, we're redoing a lot of the fencing on the property. And I've saved the most gnarly boards. They're all gray and deeply weathered, and I'm using them to make benches. Uh, I made a jig so I could join two boards along their length with biscuits. Then I use another jig to route a recess on the underside of the top for legs and a stretcher. And I take a palm sander and uh, work on the more egregious spots, the places where someone's likely to get a big splinter in their ass. <laughs> I have a lot of stains, so I use them to make sanded spots gray again. It takes me a full day to make a single bench. You working on anything outdoors? Yeah, building staircases around the house in LA, which is on a pretty hilly site. This is my exercise. I find it insanely gratifying to build these stairs. I call them my stairway to heaven. <laughs> and I have a great view of downtown L.A. from the top. A few years ago when I visited, uh, you had just completed an arch footbridge over a gully. How's that uh, holding up? I had to rebuild it. It rotted right out of its foundation. I'm not a very good carpenter. But I'm very enthusiastic. So is there a connection between woodworking and acting? Usually I answer this question, no. But lately, I do see a connection, Justin. Everything we do in this life involves a lot of repetition. In the shop, you design something and lay it out. But at a certain point, you realize you need 12 of one piece, and it would be best if they were all exactly alike. That's not different from what I do as an actor. Everyone rehearses their lines a couple times. Then a scene is blocked out and the cameras roll. There might be an interaction between you and me in the scene, and we might do it 10 or 12 times. You want all the takes to be the same, yet you also want them to seem spontaneous. So wisdom comes from realizing that there has to be repetition but also that the repetitions are never the same. Hell yeah, is that Bill Macy? Oh, f is that State Maine's my shit. Okay, I gotta go. Oh, what the fuck is that? what they eat. Oh, God. Wait, Will, Where no, Will, come back. Oh, he jumped out the window. Bill! He's gone, when's it, what's that, you f***ed it up again. I'll go back to the crate. I know when I'm not wanted. No, it's, you know, I feel like I've given you a really hard time. Woods, uh, I just feel like 
That was my one opportunity to talk to somebody who was in Seabiscuit. No, no, we, the horse is coming next week. That horse loves woodworking. <laughs> Travis, I didn't know that, but that'll be, uh, that's huge. Yeah. Uh, and you know what else is huge? Our uh, gratitude to you for tuning in for this, our first episode. First of many. Of First of many episodes of the new Appalachian Workshop featuring the McElroy Brothers, but not Griffin. Thank you to our guest, Bill Macy, yeah, for huge. coming out. And huge. And uh, thanks to you for uh, for for listening. Um, our interview with Bill Macy was, of course, provided by uh, uh, Woodcraft Magazine. So thanks to them. And, and I, uh, I, thanks- I do want to say, uh, before we forget, Will uh, left this beautiful, he's carved a little toy rocking horse here. Um, and it, it is free. Uh, we're going to give it away. Just call that number that you see at the bottom of your screen right now. Uh, and the 10th caller, uh, we're going to give that to you. Signed by William H. Macy. Uh, valued at, at about $15,000. Wow. Yeah. That's fantastic. And, oh, hey, thanks to Massing for creating our uh, uh, our intro and outro theme. Uh, if you want more of them, they're a great uh, Huntington, West Virginia band. Uh, you can find them on Bandcamp. Go to massingwv.bandcamp.com. They got songs about Geno's. They got songs about basically everything. I mean, the Pub Witch, which is also at Geno's. That does they sound like song- some kind of, like, uh, witch... That lives at a pub. Yeah, they got songs about pepperoni rolls, everything. These these guys are so talented. Uh, MassingWB.BandCamp.com. And, of course, thank you to producer Stan. Uh, without, for sure. without Stan, we wouldn't have to do this. Uh, so thank you for tuning in. And as we say every week, would, would you join, you join, us, join us next, next week? week? Hey, folks, thank you so much. Uh, if you like that, um, you can... God, just re-listening to it. Yeah, Jeff. no, listen, it was rough, but I think if we got another shot at it, I think there's a lot of things we would do differently, probably include Why Griffin. Why did they make you pretend to be Bill Macy? Yeah, well, they said that they would fix it in post, and Stan said that a lot. Um, I don't think he knew exactly what that entailed, because I didn't know how you could fix the fact that I'm not... I mean, I was yeah, wearing that not... mocap suit, so that... Maybe they were gonna deep fake it. I Maybe they were gonna. Deep it wasn't it. a mocap suit. It was. It was a just a green jumpsuit with ping pong balls on it. I try to tell you that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what that's you. That's why meant. you look so ridiculous oh. in the. Yeah. Okay. See, I I didn't know what you were talking about then. I thought you were talking about something I'm else. Embarrassed for you, honestly. At yeah. this point. Like, can we be done? Well, can yeah, we, we can. Uh, everybody, go check out. We got some new merch up for April. MacroyMerch.com. Don't forget to check that out. Uh, we got Max Fun Drive coming up pretty soon. Uh, it's very exciting. Uh, don't forget to pre-order the Adventure Zone graphic novel, uh, Crystal Kingdom, at theadventurezonecomic.com. Um, let's see. What else, Justin? Uh, thanks to MaximumFun.org. We got uh, a really beautiful Farm Wisdom, super cute, super great Farm Wisdom pen that benefits the AAPI Civic Engagement Fund, which supports efforts by local community-based organizations to combat violence and hate. Uh, there's also a new Adventure Zone shirt over there. Go check that out. Uh, and I think that's going to wrap it up. Well, folks, thank you so much for listening, and uh, be sure to join us again next week. We don't have to do our normal closing or anything because this is really kind of a more archival episode for, for posterity's sake. But thanks for listening. We really appreciate you. To cut up, to cut up, yeah. To cut up and put back together again. That was the new Appalachian Workshop featuring the McElroy Brothers. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.